All right, so in today's video, we're gonna talk about the drone mount release system. As we discussed in the previous episode, uh, the design has changed. We made it simpler and, and more lightweight, so all good things. Let's dive right in. But we're not gonna dive right into the drone release system yet. We have pilot shoots to discuss. It seems like forever ago since I made the pilot shoot for this, even though it was only like two weeks ago. I've just gotten so much done since then. First, I used my time-tested method of cutting a perfect circle from the ripstop nylon fabric, the same material I used on the Ram Air parachute. And then long story short, I attached it to the roof of the main, and that's all there really was to it. Next came shortening the A-lines in the main parachute so I could get a little bit more forward speed out of it. How short I would need to shorten them is the question. So I just pinned the front risers down a little bit to the test block and did several drop tests and kind of surprised myself to learn I needed to shorten them by a whole three inches. Here's the new angle of attack. And so I cut those lines and reattached them with a big old chunk missing from them. And it took the better part of a day to do, but definitely worth it. And you know, the case the parachute opens away from us and our guy needs to be quickly turned around or something. But now let's move on to what the episode is really about, the mounting mechanism for the drone. Yes, if you recall from our last episode, I did change the strategy from the bomb bay doors to suspended line release. Still, several questions remain to be answered. The first being, how do we strap said line to the drone? And really, I thought of two ways to do it, and one was to attach a Velcro strap to each propeller arm and connect their four lines into one just a couple inches above where the skydiver will hang. My thinking was this would reduce swaying and flight, and since the loop at the end that attaches to the skydiver's release servo is elastic cord, I decided to go with the elastic because I found it releases the most reliably. I therefore also connected a mini carabiner as weight to the line from, to keep the line from springing up into the rotors upon release. And the reason why I chose the carabiner specifically because I just figured I could probably use it in the future for other things if I wanted to tow something to maybe my brother's house <laughs> or something. But this is where it gets uh, pretty exciting. Next came testing the design with the pound and a half dummy brick I featured in last week's episode. This was the first time my drone would be tested with its lifting capabilities. So I was a little nervous. Not really sure why though, I had already done the research to learn this model can lift more than two pounds, but the only way to know for sure is if you do it yourself. Now for the first test, I didn't bother with the receiver, battery, and servo because I didn't want to test the releasing mechanism yet in fear that my drone, my drone could crash and cause more damage than need be. Um, so this first flight is just to test lift capability and stability. And as you can see, no problems getting it off the ground but there was an uncontrollable oscillation back and forth I couldn't tame. And unfortunately, because I didn't install the release mechanism, I had to land the wobbling, the wobbling drone with the payload intact. And since it was wobbling so bad, it didn't really want to come down. And I immediately recognized the problem. With different lines connected to different legs, each individual rotor had its own load to carry. And so as the brick oscillated back and forth, the load for each rotor would lessen and then increase less an increase in a cycle, causing the rotors to throttle down and throttle up respectively, and like a vicious cycle, making the wobbling worse. So the four strap idea was out, but there was a second way, just attach the suspension line to a single strap and place it on the main body of the drone. That way all four rotors would share an equal load. Luckily, I had already had a big elastic strap and some pretty hefty duty Velcro already at the house, so I could immediately get down to business. It was only another hour before I was back outside and ready to test for flight number dose. But this time I also wanted to see how easy it was for the suspension line to get caught in a propeller. If you noticed during the previous test, I had the block lying down on its side for that very reason, to keep the line pinned to the ground, but not this time. And before the drone could even take off, it snagged the line. So that was a problem I noted in the back of my mind that needed to be addressed later. But for now, I just laid the brick back down on the line and proceeded to test this new method. And immediately I noticed how much better the drone was behaving. Despite the warning beeps of the drone wanting to land because it felt like it was working too hard just to hover there, I was able to rapidly accelerate the thing and gain some altitude. Oh, and this time I did attach the release mechanism, 
but you can hear me flip the, the release switch on the transmitter with no joy. After landing it, I found that somehow, I think on takeoff with the prop wash being an issue, part of the cord slack got wrapped around the extra bit of the servo rod where it attaches to the servo and that prevented it from, from releasing. So on to test three. This time I made sure to keep the slack away from both the drone and the servo on the brick during takeoff and up we went. You can hear the neighbor girl yell, whoa. I went up and down, forward and backward, and side to side just to simulate a little bit of turbulence, and then flip the release switch. Our first successful test. But still had to land the drone, and I forgot that the bottom infrared sensor was covered by the strap and hit the ground thinking the drone would instead land itself like it normally does. Nope, I had to do it myself. And I also had to keep a close eye on that suspension line too, so I dragged it on the ground behind the drone to keep it out of the prop wash. A couple days later, I cut out a section of the strap so the sensor could still be of use, but it turned out to create new and bigger problems. The sensors are so good that they pick up the suspension line dangling underneath, and so it keeps wanting to raise altitude up and up because it thinks that suspension line is the ground, and it makes it really hard to bring it back down. So I patched it back up and decided it would be less of a headache just to land it manually myself. Even though I had a good test, science dictates I should repeat it to make sure it wasn't just luck. A good thing I did because once again, the load didn't want to release. So what I did was I just placed the brick on the ground to give it some momentary slack in the line and then it released automatically. The issue I found this time was in the way I wrapped the line around the bar before feeding it to the servo rod. The knot that secures the elastic loop and the suspension line was, uh, was pressed up against the bar and was bearing all the load. So even though the servo rod retracted, the elastic cord it was attached to wasn't under any tension, and thus it didn't even move when the, when the um, suspension line was released. To fix this issue, all I did was wrap the suspension line around the bar in a more deliberate manner to make sure that knot was not pressed up right against it. And so on to test number four. Another success. I tested another two times, both successful, so I called it a day as far as flying was concerned, and finished with securing more weight right in the middle of the suspension cord just to keep it from getting sucked, sucked up into the rotor again. It was a fun couple days of testing. I really enjoyed it. Uh, a little bit of nerve wracking. Yeah, it's like a $2,000 drone. You don't wanna, you don't wanna crash. <laughs> I think I did end up eating one, pro one uh, propeller during one of those tests because it, it uh, it chopped up that brick a little bit, but um, I have plenty of extra propellers that I bought, so we're good to go. Another huge hurdle out of the way. I can relax a little bit more now knowing that the drone can handle this thing no problem and that our releasing mechanism works. Now it's on to decoration. In our next episode, I'll go over sealing and painting the skydiver and a couple other more fun things. Until that time, Godspeed.